Hello wonderful viewer, this is Anton, welcome to What The Math. In this video we're going to take a look at this beautiful star known as Kepler 70. This is a very unusual star and you're going to find out why by watching this video. We're also going to talk a little bit about something known as a B-type subdwarf and some planets that can actually survive really extreme conditions. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And let me actually just start by doing the following. I'm going to accelerate time here just to show you what actually happens around the star. And take a look and see if you can kind of spot what is going on here. Specifically, you can kind of see that there is something moving in this particular direction. There's actually like a, a, almost like a ray of light. Now, can you guess what that is? I'm about to show you. If I were to actually move a little bit closer to the star, you would realize that very, very close to Kepler-70, there is actually two planets. It has two planets orbiting around it, but very, very close orbit to itself. And these two planets are known as Kepler-70b and Kepler-70c. They're actually holders of really, really cool records. For one, they're probably the closest planets to each other. They only have a distance, like right here, the distance between them is only about uh, 200,000 kilometers, which is even closer than our moon is to our planet Earth. So if I were to actually uh, come closer to this particular planet and then stand on its surface, I would then be able to actually um, see the other planet relatively well. The surface of the other planet would be very, very easy for me to see. But they also hold another record. These are probably the hottest planets we've found so far. Now, it doesn't actually show you the real temperature here, unfortunately, but the temperature of Kepler-70b is close to 7,000 degrees Celsius. It is super hot here. Like, if you... And look at actually how beautiful it is, too. If I were to land here, I would basically not be able to see anything. And my whole world on this planet is essentially just this complete blinding brightness. I, I don't even know where I am anymore because it's impossible to see anything. I'm going to have to actually escape this planet because it is just way too bright. Here we are in the atmosphere of this super, super hot, beautiful planet. And this is actually us just looking at the star Kepler-70. This is how close we are to this particular star. And so the other record that this particular planet holds is that it actually has the shortest year that we've found so far, except of course for that uh, object I showed you in the previous video that I referred to as the diamond planet. But technically that was actually not even a planet because it used to be a star that became a planet and that particular object had an orbit of about two hours. But Kepler-70b um, has an orbit that is actually relatively short as well. And so here, a complete orbit would take me about 5.7 hours. And this is basically a year. A year on this planet is only about 6 hours long, which is probably the shortest interval we've found so far of an actual real planet that hasn't actually been something else before that. And so this is what it looks like if you basically stand kind of on the surface here and look into the sky. So this is a ridiculously hot sort of object, including this other planet that's, that's orbiting around it. Now, what is interesting is that if you look at this, uh, the actual star here, it's called a blue subdwarf. So it's not a main sequence star. And it's not a, a white dwarf either, it's something in between, and this is where it becomes a little bit more interesting. The origin of the star is actually kind of cool. Because long time ago, this used to be very similar to our, our sun, and then it undergone its um, red giant phase that our sun will have too at some point. And this is what transformed this particular planet. Now I'm going to show all of this to you using Universe Sandbox 2, we're going to try to recreate what exactly happened here. But just for now, enjoy the view of Space Engine and this beautiful planet and this beautiful star Kepler-70. We're going to escape this in a few seconds. Uh, oh, one more thing I forgot to mention is that this planet actually has a very similar density to our planet Earth. So it's technically an Earth-like planet with uh, a mass of about 4.5 times mass of Earth. With one major exception, of course, being that it is so ridiculously close to its star that nothing would probably survive here because the temperatures here are just too extreme. Anyway, so let's actually talk about the origin of Kepler-70 and try to recreate this in Universe Sandbox. Now, Universe Sandbox 2 already has pre-made Kepler-70 for us, so we don't have to do anything new here. And I can actually pause here and zoom in on this particular planet. And it does have a different name slightly, but this is definitely Kepler-70b. Um, 
and it is going to get super toasty hot here. It's, uh, according to this game, it's about 5,700 degrees, even though it's technically a lot more. Now, let's actually recreate the origin of these two planets now. Before, long time ago, specifically uh, about 30 to 40 million years ago, these two planets were actually gas giants. And they were a lot farther away from the star as well. So this particular star wasn't like this at all before. As a matter of fact, this is what it was like. It was actually a main sequence star, uh, very similar to our star, possibly uh, a little bit bigger than the sun. Um, so here I, I've decided to make the mass about two, twice the mass of sun. And it had these two awesome gas giants, Kepler-70b, and we don't really have a better name for them. So Kepler-70b is right here and Kepler-70c is right after it. Now, so this was a regular main sequence um, star. And so what started happening after obviously it reached sort of the end of its life, it started to expand and become what's known as a red giant. So here we're going to try to simulate this if we can. So I'm going to go in here and actually change the age of the star until it starts growing larger. So here we go. It's going a little bit bigger. And unfortunately, in this game, you can't really create a super re a big red giant, but it essentially started getting bigger and bigger. But at the same time, something else was happening. These two planets actually, and you can already see them smoking here, uh, they actually started to uh, get closer and closer to the star. And this could have been for many different reasons, um, very likely because of something called tidal effects of the star and also because their orbit probably wasn't very stable to begin with and so with time both of these planets actually started to approach the star closer and closer and closer and so their semi-major axis actually started to drop quite dramatically and um, as this was happening the star was also kind of expanding, so uh, both things were happening at once. So on one hand, you had these planets moving closer and closer, and this actually does happen quite a lot. Uh, like, for example, um, our moon is actually technically moving away from our Earth, and there, is, there are certain planets in, um, in our galaxy that are moving closer to the stars and will eventually get swallowed by them. Now, as these planets were approaching the, um, the red giant here, they actually were exposed to quite a lot of solar radiation and because of this they started losing their gas giant, giant shell and uh, you may have watched the video i've made previously about ketonian planets this is essentially what's going to happen to them all of this gas is going to escape they're go basically going to get completely dry dried out and the only thing that will be left over uh, at the end of all of this is going to be a very sort of a solid shell that you they have underneath so this part right here this um, iron and silicate shell will not actually be evaporated but the gas will get evaporated and so they will eventually become ketonian planets now we, we know quite a lot of ketonian planets in our galaxy in our universe and we've already found quite a lot of them. Um, surprisingly none of them in our solar system because they seem to be very 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 common. Uh, but with time, and you can kind of see, if I go into materials here, you can see how much material these actual these uh, these planets are losing under right here. They're actually losing four moons per. I think this is per second. That's a lot of stuff lost. So they're going to basically become very very skinny very very soon. Um, and because they were so close to the star, they were losing a lot of materials super fast. And the star was actually expanding at the same time which we're going to simulate here as well by going to age again and changing the size of the star. And, and so here we go. This star has now become a nova remnant. It didn't really have a supernova, but it did become a red giant and then lost its outer shell. Now, interestingly, there are, there are certain stars out there that for some reason do not actually turn into white dwarfs right away. Like our sun will become a white dwarf, but for some reason, certain stars don't do that right away. And so something happened and even though it lost its shell, it didn't really become a white dwarf, but what it became instead is known as a B-type subdwarf. So it's a star that is actually not as bright as, as our sun, but also much, much brighter than any other white dwarf. So it's sort of like in between a white dwarf and a main sequence star, and it's known as a B-type subdwarf. And this is actually a little bit too large. Um, and I think this particular example is actually really, really large. It's not, it wasn't really as big as this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you how big it was. Uh, but let's just wait for at least one of these planets uh, or gas giants to become an actual Ketonian planet. I'm going to uh, give it a few years to lose all of its gas, all of its hydrogen that you see right here. 
and you can we're gonna accelerate this just so you can see how fast it's losing it and you'll see that at the end what's left is basically actonian planets it's an earth-like planet that is essentially just a shell of its former self and really it's just the the inner side of the gas giant that we actually have in um, planets in our solar system as well so both jupiter and saturn and of course neptune and uranus have these inner um, cores as well and we're we're almost there and a few more seconds and you're about to see what's left of this gas giant and there we go so this is actonian planet and very likely a similar looking planet to what we have in kepler 70 system all right so that's kepler 70 c actually I, I, I think i accidentally placed them in the wrong order this should be kepler 70 b and this should be kepler 70 c but basically this is what or i guess here's a better representation this is what was left at the end. So we had two Ktonian planets, two planets that used to be gas giants, and a star that didn't really become a white dwarf and became something known as a B-type subdwarf, which are actually quite rare. They're not very common. And we're not entirely sure what exactly happens and what causes this premature sort of creation of a red giant phase because it shouldn't have happened yet. But we think that it's either because there was some kind of interaction with possibly a binary system, so maybe there was another star that it interacted with, or it's very likely that uh, it was actually two white dwarfs that combined into one sort of giant subdwarf. But yeah, anyway, so this is still a mystery to us. We know they exist, we know that they're out there, but how they're actually formed, we're not really sure. And so this is essentially the system that you can create in Universe Sandbox 2. And uh, this is a kind of a record holder of many different records, including, like I said before, the shortest orbiting um, planet, the hottest planet, and of course, the shortest distance between two planets passing close to each other, which you'll see in a second. And there you go. They're very, very close to each other right now at a distance of about 200,000 kilometers. And this is actually minutes per second. If you were to just do regular second per second uh, or real time, I guess, um, this is what it would look like. So here, one year is very, very fast. It's only a few hours long. And both of these planets are ridiculously hot. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to show you this incredible system, this unusual star that we don't really know exactly how it was formed star full of mysteries and these two really cool planets that used to be gas giants survived the red uh, giant stage of a star and then became these really super hot objects that we know are out there today thank you so much for watching guys i appreciate all of your support i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share this video and also leave a like if you've actually learned something cool about it and also thank you so much to all of you that support me on patreon because a lot of that support means a lot to me Thank you guys, I'll see you in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye Now let's accelerate time here and see what happens if we make these planets orbit even closer to the star than this. Decrease the semi-major axes until they start smacking into each other. Okay, I made this a little bit different from what I expected to do, but that's just kind of cool, look at that. Increase eccentricity and collision? No. Oh no, what have I done? I've destroyed it. I've killed it all. Look how beautiful this is though.